लेजन ऑफ प्राइमरी एंड सेकेंडरी विजुअल कॉटेक्स ब्रॉडमैन एरिया नंबर सेवेंटीन एटीन एंड नाइनटीन ओके Now this you are seeing are the two surfaces. This one is the superlateral surface, and this one is the medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere, right? So this purple color area you are seeing both the sides on both the surfaces. This is primary visual area, and this is area number seventeen. On the medial side, this is called the calcarine sulcus, both on its upper and lower surfaces, and on the posterior, on the superlateral surface at the posterior of the occipital end, there is the post calcarine sulcus, right? So this is the representation of retina here on the calcarine sulcus, and this calcarine is an example of complete sulcus. This is post calcarine sulcus. It's mainly the you know fovea central is the central most portion of the macula that is represented here and this is a post calcarine sulcus it's an example of axial sulcus okay then the green color area as you are seeing green color ones this is called this gyrus is actually called lingula this is called lingula and here you have both areas number 18 and 19 now this is actually the part this area in 19 are actually are peri and para striate areas or you can say secondary visual areas on the lingula similarly here you seeing is this area is cuneus cuneus and this also has areas 18 and 19 okay para and peri striate areas and both of them cuneus lingula and here also on the superlateral surface here also you have the same areas 17 and 18 17 no sorry it's 18 and 19 here also on the superlateral surface so all of them like 18 and 19 they are considered as secondary areas 17 is the primary visual area okay lesion of uh, primary visual area number 17 right area number 17 i told you from the lgb uh, optic radiation was reaching in both the surfaces dorsal and ventral surface of the calcarine sulcus reaching to the post calcarine sulcus from the upper half of the retina they were reaching in the upper portion uh, surface of uh, calcarine sulcus on the lower half of the retina fibers were reaching into the lower surface of the retina and the central fibers the macular fibers they have a larger representation and were represented in the posterior portion of the calcarine sulcus the peripheral fibers were reaching into the anterior portion of the calcarine sulcus that was the spatial representation right and don't forget that it's not the only destination of the optic radiation there are a few fibers of this genicul calcarine tract they are also relaying directly into area number 18 and 19 also okay but because majority of the fibers for the sense of visual uh, sense of you know bright light or or uh, you know sense of vision is relayed here in 17 so in case of this lesion right because you know uh, let's say if you're looking on the right side if you're looking on the right side it means you have a you know conjugate gaze towards the right side so what is happening your right temporal retina is been illuminated and from your left Uh, sorry if you are looking to the right side your uh, your right nasal retina and your left temporal retina will perceive the image right so if you seeing on the uh, right side so uh, the left temporal retinal fibers will pass ipsilaterally through the optic chiasma and reach on to the left side of the cerebral cortex occipital cortex while fibers from the nasal retina on the right side will decussate through optic chiasma and will reach now on to the left side of the occipital cortex in the calcarine sulcus primary visual cortex means your uh, 
left cerebral hemisphere or the left occipital lobe or the left primary visual cortex sees the images of the right side of your visual field while the uh, you know the right calcarine sulcus the right primary visual center 17 area visualizes what you was what the images are being formed onto the you know um, basically what you are seeing is on the left side of your visual field got it so means these centers these visual centers control what you see in the opposite half of the visual field got it so if there is a lesion like on the uh, whatever side there will be a contralateral hemianopia got it so, lesion of vision in the visual field of the opposite side and that is called homonymous hemianopia. Got it? And if there is a lesion of 18 and 19, then what will happen? Visual agnosia. I told you before also. Right? This is vig visual agnosia means you, are, you, are, you have a saved memory of images. Now, if this is damaged, you may not be able to identify your relatives. You may not be identify, able to identify your friends or the celebrities you have been identifying with previously. You will not be able to find yeah, you, or maybe like whatever written things or, or the orientation will be lost because you are having this problem of visual agnosia. And because of this, let me tell you, there will be a defective speech also. You cannot, by, while reading a book, you will not be able to read, right? Because visual stimulus, is, you will not be able to comprehend and accordingly you speak. So, that will, that will be called, you know, uh, I will tell you about uh, all in detail about the speech because that is a big topic. I will not do it here, right? So, if your visual impulses is, are lost basically and you are, you are shown an object and you are asked to tell about it, you start speaking irrelevant things, right? Because you are not comprehending the visual stimulus and that is called jargon aphasia, right? Repetition of words is spoken but they are meaningless.